Welcome to Peak Worship. We're so excited that you tuned in today. Pastor Dan has a powerful word for you, and we are believing and praying that it's going to change your life. The Why series. I'm excited about this series. This series is um, really changing my life. It, it's ministering to me. There's a lot within the Why series that I love. But I'm just going to throw out a disclaimer here real quick. I would love to be able to cover all of our whys within six week period, but we're not going to be able to. So we're not going to be able to cover all the whys. We're picking the, the, the majority of the highest percentage of the asked whys that we know of. So those are the whys that we are actually covering. I'm going to be next year adding to the why series. I'm going to be adding more um, lectures and scriptures, and I'm actually going to be going through and adding a study book within the um, why series so we can answer all of our why so we can come and, and come to the conclusion that God is God that we can understand some of these things that we don't understand about God and it brings a fullness amen so we're going to be doing that next year but just bear with us we have six weeks of why's we're in the second uh, week of our why series and we are going to be talking about today why do we fear why do we fear we all seem to have fear we all seem to have challenges with fear. It's something that we live with. It's something that we deal with. So why aren't we talking about it? But what I want to do is I just want to open up with prayer right now. And I want to go right into the scripture. And I want our hearts opened and our minds open. Amen. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you for your teaching. We thank you that it's instruction for our life. We thank you that it's how we should live out our life. Father, I ask you to open up our hearts and our minds to receive everything that you have for us, Father God. Precious Holy Spirit, speak through me that it's nothing of Daniel, that it's all of you. In Jesus' mighty name, and everyone says, amen, amen. Why do we fear? Why do we fear? Let me just tell you why we fear. Lucifer was cast out of heaven. We ate off the tree. Now we know good and evil. That's it. All heads bowed. We're going to close right now. Lord, we. That's really what it is, though. I was about to get in next week's message, but I'm not going to. But Lucifer was cast out. We ate from a tree. Eating of that tree created a realm of fear created a room, a demonic spirit that came about that lives and, and has presence within us right here, right here on this earth. Fear, the definition of fear, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. An unpleasant emotion caused by the belief, something that we believed in. Let's take a look at the definition of belief. Belief is an acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists. Trust, faith, or confidence in someone or something. So if I have my confidence, my faith, my trust in something that's not of God, I'll have fear. If I have my faith, my belief, in something that is of God, I should have joy and confidence and peace. Why do we fear? Why do we fear? Because so many times we have our eyes set on the world instead of our eyes set on God. See, we fear because we set our eyes on the, on the Lord. I mean, on, on the world. We fear because of the world. So many times we set our eyes on the world and it breaks down. I'm going to talk about three things within setting our eyes on the world. When we focus on the world, I know of three things and these three things pretty well cover why we fear. One is our past. Two is our future. And the third is our choices. Past brings fear. Future brings fear. Wrong choices brings fear. So we could either focus on the world or we could focus on God. I can have fear for the world or I can have fear for God. 
Fear for God is a rev is reverence. That means I reverence my father in heaven. That means I fear him. I want to please him. My decisions, my choices that I make, I want to make sure my heavenly father is pleased with what I choose. I want to make sure my lifestyle lines up according to his word. My fear with the Lord is reverence. That reverence brings in a comfort within me that I will not focus on the world, that I'll focus on him. See, Psalms 27, 1 says, The Lord is my light in my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? See, when I focus my sight on the Lord, whom shall I be afraid of? What fear should be in my life? What situation could actually overcome God? Is my finances a problem that God can't handle? Is my marriage a problem that God can't handle? Is there anything that God cannot handle? So if I set my sights on him, why should I have fear? It's when we get our sights off of him, our Lord and Savior, the fear of reverence turns into fear of the world. See, fear is Satan's tool to destroy God's children. See, if he can interfere within you, then it's going to change your life. Satan loves to use fear. He uses fear in so many ways that if I can put fear into them, they might walk a different path than what God's called them to walk. If I put fear into them, then they're not going to choose what God just said to choose. If I can put fear into them, then they're going to be worried. They're going to be doubtful. They're not going to rely on who can do all things. They're not going to have reverence to please them. They're going to make choices off of the fear that I instill in them. See, that's what Satan wants to do. Satan uses fear within this realm, a demonic force. He uses as a tool against God's children. The sad thing is, He can't make us, ultimately is our choice. But I want to talk today, I want to talk today about fear is just an emotion. That's all it is. It's nothing more than just an emotion. If we set our sights on God, we should never have to deal with the, the emotion of fear. We should never have to put our belief in fear. We should never put our sights on the, on the world, but only on God. So I want to talk to you today. Joshua 1.9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Whithersoever thou goest, he's with me. He helps me. He encourages me. He supports me. See, there's just a few things within this world, past, future, and our choices that really puts in fear. My past puts in fear because of what I know I've done. My past of making the wrong decisions. You don't understand what I've done. I've made some bad choices. I was a liar. I wasn't a good father. I was this and this and this. That past brings in worry and doubt. It brings in confusion. It brings in things that we shouldn't be focused on. It brings in stuff that we put our minds on that we should never, ever ponder. But it's the past that we live by in so many times that brings in fear. And that fear dictates the future. I can't go after this promotion because I didn't get it the last time. Loneliness comes from the past. How many times we've been lonely and loneliness brings in a fear. I used to be with someone. I used to have some friends. My life was a little different. Loneliness sets in. Fear starts setting in. I'll never find someone. I'll never have someone again. I'll never have that friendship. 
Loneliness sets in. It's a fear that if we allow it to cultivate within our hearts and our minds, it will destroy us. Because loneliness, if I can throw loneliness into your life, if you allow Satan to throw loneliness, then it's going to back you up into isolation. And Satan loves to isolate you from God's children. He loves to isolate you from God. Now he has all the say-so in your life. Loneliness. Loneliness. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. If we set our sights on God, and we cultivate the love in God, God will come in and fill any void that of loneliness. We don't have to deal with the loneliness because I know my Father walks with me. That will destroy that loneliness that brings the fear of will I have someone in my life. That will destroy everything that Satan means for bad. Do I love, do I cultivate the love of my Father that I focus on Him and I stay away from the past? Yeah. Anxiety brings fear. How many times have you been anxious about something? Anxiety sets in. How am I going to pay the bills? The refrigerator's half empty. We have to eat dinner. I have to have food next, next day. I need to fix my lunch. You don't understand what I'm going through at work. Anxiety comes in. Anxiety of the past comes in and it sets fear. Majority of the time when you have anxiety, I'll guarantee you there's fear somewhere attached to it. Worry, doubt, confusion, it all sets in. You start worrying about your job. You don't know what happened last week. You start worrying about your past. See, all that stuff sets in. Oh, my wife, I don't know where she's at. She's going out and yet she did. It leads you to the wrong directions. It starts making you think things that you shouldn't be thinking because your sights aren't on the Lord. Do we allow this to come in? Do we allow this fear to come in and dictate our life? Do we allow this fear to come in and control our life? See, Psalms 46 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. What are we worried about our past for? What are we worried about what, what we've done before? What, what do we have that we cannot take to the Lord? Why do we allow the past to dictate the future? Why do we allow the past to destroy the moment? Genesis 15, 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Hmm. But see, if Satan can tell you that God isn't your shield, you're going to take your eyes off of him. If I keep my eyes on him, I'm going to understand he's my buckler. He's my shield. He's, he's the one that defeats my enemies. Everything's taken care of. I can walk in victory and never in a loss. I can always have my refrigerator full. I can understand that he said I would never go without have you ever gone without food? I don't think so because you're all still here. That's right. So I think we've all eaten. Right? I think we've all been fed. I think we've all been supplied. God is my shield. But if I get that focus off of him and I start looking at my past, I'm going to bring things into my life that will have control and put fear that I'll never be able to break. We have to take our past and we have to give it to the Lord. And this is what we do. We have to know that God is God. Isaiah 43, 25. E I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for my own sake and will not remember thy sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. 
How many times that we grab our past, not realizing that we gave our heart to Jesus Christ and he made what was old and he made it new. He renewed our minds. He renewed our hearts. He's changed everything. I don't have to live by the past. The problem is, is we don't believe that Jesus has done that. We need to start looking through the eyes of Jesus when we look in the mirror and realize my past has no authority over my future. My past, I'm not going to live by and dictate the moment. I'm going to spend the time with my wife and my son. I'm not going to allow what was to be dictated to what's now, what's my present future right here, right now. I'm going to enjoy what God has given me right now. I'm done with the past. It's covered by the blood. I might not have been a good father here, but I'm a good father now. I might not have been a good friend here, but I'm a good friend now. I might have not paid my bills on time, but I pay my bills on time now. My focus might have been wrong, but it's right now. I'm a new man. I'm not going to let the past bring in fear. I wasn't able to, but now I am. We need to walk out of the past and we need to let it go. And we need to know that it's covered with the blood. It says in Isaiah 43, 18, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hmm. Philippians 3, 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Are we living by the past or are we living for the moment? Am I living for the past and allowing fear to come in or am I living for the moment? What are we doing? What are we doing? See, so many times the past will dictate the future. Then we start, we start worrying about the future instead of the moment. How many times we start worrying about the future and we start destroying the moment? You know what? Those icebergs are going to start melting. I don't even know Florida's going to exist anymore. Two years from now, I don't even know if the company's going to exist. Worry starts coming in. Doubt starts coming in because I'm looking at the future. Well, doesn't God want us to look at the future? Yeah, God wants us to look at the future. He does. But you know what he wants us to do? He wants us to bring our petitions to him. God, this is what I'd like to have. I'd love to have a business. I'd love to go to school. I'd love to have a nice house. I'd like to have a great job that I can provide for my family. I'd love to have some kids. I want to make sure they have college. Father God, you know my heart. This is what I want. But whatever I want, more than anything, I want your will to be done. I'm not going to put it in place. I'm not going to predict it or dictate it, how it's going to come to pass. I told you, Father God, what I want. Now I'm going to stand in the moment and enjoy it and let you work out my future. See, the problem is we start looking too far down the road. We're next week. We're two weeks. We're two years. We're three years. We're on anxiety pills because I'm all messed up. I don't even know where the world's going to be. I don't even know what this. I don't even know. You know, uh, you're popping pills just to calm us down because of anxiety. And, 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 uh, 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 and your family's looking at you like you're nuts. Let's get a straight jacket because this man's all messed up. When I could be saying, Lord, your will be done. You know what I want and you know how to handle it. You know how to lay it out for the best of me. So, Father God, I'm not going to worry. I give you the worry. I give you the doubt because I want to sit here and enjoy what you gave me. You gave me life today. You gave me my family you gave me everything today. I'm going to enjoy my wife. I'm going to enjoy my son. Father, tomorrow might not ever even come. <sighs> Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I say to, unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on is, no, is not the life more than meat and the body than arraignment. Behold, the fowls of the air... For they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you by taking thought can add one cubic unto his stature? What by taking thought of the future does anything for this moment? And why take ye the thought for raiment? 
Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that seven Solomon, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what wherewith all shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Hmm. Take no thought. Take no thought. Enjoy what God's given you right now in the present time. Take no thought for tomorrow. He's fed you today. He's going to feed you tomorrow. Don't let the past dictate the future. Don't let the future dictate the moment. Enjoy what God's given you. I've seen too many people live out life. They get 70, 80, 90 years old. They sit there and they realize... They allowed the past and the future to destroy the moment. I want you to, to enjoy the moment. I want you to enjoy what God's given you now. Take a step back and look and stop the world for a moment. Let the world go by and say, God has blessed me with the house. God has blessed me with the furniture. God has blessed me with electricity. God has blessed me with the, the groceries. God has blessed me with everything. God has blessed me with the marriage. God has blessed me with friendship. God has blessed me with good neighbors. God has truly blessed me. Let me just stop for a moment and just enjoy and not worry about tomorrow because if I worry about tomorrow all I'm going to do is get stressed out because I have no idea what corporate America is doing I have no idea what the government's doing I don't even know if I have tomorrow so let me just enjoy right now give me some ice cream and cookies because I'm going to enjoy it right now <laughs> that's what God wants second Timothy 1 7 for God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hmm. So since I'm not going to worry about the past and I'm not going to worry about the future and I'm going to live in the moment, that means I can focus on my choices because my choices will dictate whether I have fear or joy. My choices will determine if I have happiness. Oh, my 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 choices determines my moment. So the past is gone. The future is gone. Everything in God's hand. Covered by the blood, walking into the blood. I just live for today. So now I want to make some right choices. I don't want to be like Jonah. Jonah, he made a wrong choice. He didn't follow God's direction. So he ends up on a boat. They throw him overboard. This whale comes and eats him. The whale poof, spits him out because he didn't taste good. He had to go through all that because he made a wrong choice. How many of you guys made bad choices before? Have any of you made a bad choice? If not, let me just say this. Have you made a bad choice that brings in fear? Have you ever been driving down the road and you get a little upset and you cut someone off? After you cut them off, they start following you and chasing you down. Doesn't fear kind of set in? So your choice kind of put fear. It's like, oh my goodness, they're going to keep following me. You run a red light. You run a red light just hoping that they won't. Oh, they did. They did. Oh, my God. I'm driving to the police. I'm not, I'm not going to stop at the mall. Our choices can bring fear. Making the right choices can bring fear. Making the right choices can eliminate the fear. So your choices can bring upon fear or it can bring upon joy. It can bring upon blessings or cursings. A choice. Blessings is a choice. Cursings is a choice. Slothfulness is a choice. Well, how does slothfulness bring on fear? Well, if the farmer is slothful and he doesn't go out there and grow, and oh, he gets hungry, what's he going to eat? Fear starts setting in. How am I going to provide for my family? How about procrastination? How many procrastinators out there? Don't raise your hand. Okay, you did. Okay. But procrastination sets in fear. How many of you in high school? Some of you might still be. You don't do your homework. You don't study. The alarm clock goes off. Ding, 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 ding. 
Fear sets in that you have this big test and you didn't study, you didn't do your homework. Wrong choices. Procrastination sets in fear. Fear that we don't have to live with. Fear that if we would have made the right choice, we could have eliminated this anxiety. We could have eliminated this worry and this doubt. But it's our choices that makes it that way. Moses had fear. Moses had fear. See this burning bush. His fear came because he didn't think he was adequate enough. He thought he was completely inadequate to please God. God, I, I stutter. I, you, I, can't go, I can't go free those people. I can't. Inadequate. When you feel inadequate about yourself, fear will come in. You need to know that you are a child of the most living high God. You need to know who you are in the kingdom. You need to know that you call Abba Father in heaven, Father. You need to know that. Don't allow that inadequacy to come in. Don't allow that doubt to come in and stir up fear. Know who you are within the kingdom. Know who you are. Know who your father is. Choices. They ate off the tree. Genesis 2, 9. They ate off the tree. And that brought in fear. A choice brought in fear that we're still, in, still doing, dealing with today. A choice. A choice. The spies went over there to take a look at the promised land. All of them but two came back. Their choice was God's not bigger. Any time that I allow fear to come in, I'm telling God that what I fear is bigger than you. That's all I'm doing. God, I fear this. Well, why do you fear this? Because you, do you see this? Do you understand that I'm everything? Do you understand that I've already defeated the enemy? Do you understand how big I am? Do you understand that I created the universe? Do you understand I created you? By you fearing that tells me that I'm smaller than your fear. Yeah. And if I'm smaller than your fear, what are you here for? Because you're just saying, I can't help you. Choices. Two of them said, God's bigger than the giants. God's already given us victory. And they walk over to the promised land. Mm -mm -mm -mm. How about Peter? Peter, a choice. He kept his eyes focused on Jesus. He made a choice to come outside the boat. He walked on water. His choice changed. He decided to look at the world. He decided to put his sight on the waves. He decided to put his sight on the wind. He started sinking because he made a choice to put his sight on the world instead of on God. We, when we take our sight off of Jesus Christ, don't expect to be glorified. Don't expect to be exalted. Don't expect to be successful. Don't expect the blessings because we're saying, Jesus, this is greater than you. Peter was saying, Lord, the waves are greater than you. The wind's greater than you. Well, let me just show you, Peter, who I am. May there be peace. May there be calmness. Let me come and pick you up. We always need to keep our sights on Jesus Christ. When we keep our sights on him, we'll never sink. I know it's tough. We live in a world that Satan wants us to fail. But we also live in a world that God's given us the grace, the mercy to stand back up and dust ourselves off and walk again. That's what God's done. Ephesians 5.11 And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. God doesn't want us to fellowship. He doesn't want us to choose the darkness. He doesn't want us to choose wrong. He will always bring light on the wrong choice. He will always overcome darkness. Our choices bring in fear. Hey, I'm out on a date. Hey, you know, my, my play, you know, the movie theater, the sound's just not that good. I, I have a better sound system at the house. Would you like to come over to the house? Yeah, sure. Okay, your choice was great. Come over at the house. You're watching the movie. Where are you watching the movie in the dark for? You know, this couch, it's really uncomfortable. You've only been sitting on it for 30 minutes. There, I've got a better piece of furniture in my house that is more comfortable. My mattress. Choices. Choices. See, we make choices not thinking God's going to bring light onto it. 
The night's great. The window and the blinds open. The sun comes up. Light starts shining into the room. It starts revealing some things within the room. I, I, I just rub my eyes. I get the Cheerios out of my eyes. You know, because you all, everybody has Cheerios in the morning. You, know, you get those things out of your eyes so you can focus. And you start seeing there's clothes all around. And they're not only your clothes. You start thinking, do I roll over? You roll over. Your choice, your choice just brought in fear. Your choice just brought in fear. Now, what's the sad thing is you can look at that two different ways. You fear that you have to live with that the rest of your life because of the bad breath. You fear what's going to happen. Is there going to be a baby in nine months or ten months? Or you can have the fear of the Lord and your first instinct comes, God's not happy with my choice. Repentance comes in. That's how you know when your heart's right. When you make a mistake, a bad choice, the first thing you think of, my Lord's not happy. My Lord's not happy. Because when you start that process where the Lord's not happy, then that process is going to come in. Should I invite her over the house? That's not going to please the Lord. The movie theater is very good. Our choices will bring in fear. It brings in circumstances. And I'm telling you, when you bring in the right choices, when you keep your eyes focused on God, you won't have that worry. You won't have that doubt. You won't have those consequences that's going to dictate your future. Oh, it's awful quiet in here. It's awful quiet. Ephesians 4.31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Well, pastor, what does it have to do with fear? Bitterness, wrath, and anger and clamor. If you don't get rid of bitterness, anger, all your malice, if you don't start dealing with the unforgiveness, the bitterness, the hatred, if you don't start dealing with that, it's going to create fear within you. I don't understand. That family members that you're just hating, that bitterness, that anger, when it comes time for Christmas, you're going to have the fear to go, I have to go see them. Thanksgiving, I got to go see them. Fear will rise up because of the bitterness and hatred. Isolation starts coming within family members. Friendships are destroyed because of that. I haven't dealt with it, so now I'm going to destroy the relationship. Let me tell you, it happens. Fear sets in. I have to go see that coworker. Man, I can't believe what they did to me. Have you taken it to God and put your sights on God and let God handle the situation so you can walk in there with joy and peace? So you can make a right choice. Hmm. I want you to live your life for the moment. I want you to live your life for what God's given you now. I don't want you to be a Jacob and an Esau. Jacob made a wrong choice. Stole his brother's birthright. Created fear within him and he ran from his family. Disowned his family. Ran from them out of fear. Amen. Choice brought in fear. That bad choice brought in a past that he was fearful of. I just did this. And he lived for years fearing the past. Not only did the decision in his past bring in fear, whenever it was time, whenever he had the gall to go back, the future started bringing in fear. He started looking at the future. God, he's not going to like me. God, he's going to destroy them. That's the reason why he sent men and sacrifices to give to his brother beforehand, because he's going to destroy me. Wrong choice brought in fear. The past kept the fear. The future had fear within his life. And if he would just give it to God and live for the moment and made the right choice, he would have never had a past to get away with. He would have never had to worry about the future. He would have realized that at that time his brother came up and gave him a big hug. See, he worried about something that never happened. 
He worried about something that he created. We have to give it away. We have to let it go. I want you to start living your life according to what God said to do. I want you to deal with this fear. I want you to remove this fear. I want you to let the past go and I want you to leave the future to God. And I want you to focus on the moment of making the right decisions. I want you to walk out the blessings of God. How do I do this, pastor? It's called you have to get your eyes and your sight set on him. You only have to look at Jesus. You look at Jesus, you'll always walk on the water. You'll never make a wrong choice, a wrong decision. You'll always make the right step when you keep your eyes focused on him. And in, in closing, I want you to take a look at these scriptures and I want you to ponder it with your heart. Colossians 3, 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking unto him, keep our eyes focused on him who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I've done a lot of computer programming over the years. I've programmed this computer and I get so irate when this stupid thing doesn't do the right thing. I want to pick it up. I've picked up computers, Lord forgive me, before and shook them. I've slammed keyboards. And then I just realized you're the one that programmed it. It's just doing exactly what you said to do. We need to reprogram our thoughts. We need to reprogram our lives. Have you ever seen anybody in karate? They go there and they spend hours same punch, same punch. Can I stop? No, no. Same punch, same punch, same kick. I'm going to fall. Same kick. I can't kick anymore. Same blocks for hours and hours. Sweat's coming off, sweat's coming off. And you're doing the same punch, the same punch over and over and over. Why do they have you do that? For when you get into a mist or a situation, it becomes an automatic it becomes just a habit. It's natural. Someone goes to punch you, it's just an automatic block. It's a reflex. We need to reprogram ourselves to God's word that he becomes an automatic. We need to set our sights on him that he becomes an automatic. You don't know what they said to me. Turn the other cheek. You don't know what they did to me. God forgive them for they know not what they do. We need to become an automatic for God. When we become an automatic for God, no fear comes in. It's only God's word. You need to memorize scripture. You need to pray. You need to fast. You need to make this book a lifestyle. Like those punches. I'm going to read this. I'm going to read this. I'm going to memorize this. I'm going to memorize this. I'm going to pray. I'm going to fast. I'm going to spend time with God because he's going to become an automatic in my life. When someone cuts me off, hey, Jesus, I love you. Hallelujah. It becomes automatic. The problem is, is when God's not an automatic, we put our sights on the world and then that's when Satan has his way to interfere. Why do we fear? Why do we fear? That's the why today. Because so many times we're living by the past, we're living by the future, and we're living by bad choices because we're not focused on God. We don't go to God with our choices before we make them. God, what would make you happy? The why do we fear? Is because my lack of fear with God, but greater fear of the world. God, I fear here. I just made them small. If I have reverence and fear of the Lord, I get to know my Lord and Savior. I know that He is my victorious Lord. I know He's defeated cancer. I know He's defeated the enemy. I know He has Jehovah Jireh, my provider. I know He has Jehovah Rapha, my healer. I know that He has everything. My sights are set on you, Father God. I fear not. 
I will walk out this life, this moment with joy and happiness because God, you are of reverence. I reverence you. You are God. You are holy of holies and I serve you. And when I serve you and I fear you, I'll never fear the world. Because when the world, Satan, you come up to something you've never done before and Satan wants to throw that fear in your, your little head, you can't do this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Your automatic jumps in. Well, let me just tell you, I thought Philippians said, you know, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Yeah. It's an automatic. You don't even entertain it. Proverbs 16, 3 says, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. If I commit my works to him, he'll establish those thoughts. Emotions turns into a thought. Romans 8, 15, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We have to realize who our father is. We need to get to know our father in heaven. We need to make our father an automatic. Moses defeated Pharaoh because our father wasn't automatic in his life. He might have been inadequate at first, but as he grew and started reading the word and started knowing God, he realized he could do all things. Let me just tell you, Pharaoh, I know you could destroy me, but my God's not going to allow you. I'm going to walk these people right out of this place. He had no problem when the enemy was behind him to take that staff and put it in the water and part the seas. David, oh, he didn't see Goliath. He didn't fear Goliath. He feared our Lord. So by fearing our Lord, reverence with him, knowing that God Almighty knows everything, can defeat our enemies. He came in the power of God, not in the fear of Goliath. He didn't fear Goliath. All the Israelites did. That's the reason why they stayed there. He came out and taunted them. David come up and says, I come in the name of the Lord. Man, I have my reverence, my fear is in him. He's already destroyed. When we come into our life, our jobs, our families, our relationships with that, things will change. Satan's not going to dictate fear. Satan's not going to allow us to change what God has for us to a different direction. No, God said this, but you see the enemies over there, but you know who my God is. I'm not going to change because I see a Goliath. God said, walk this way. That means he's going to provide. He's going to take care of. He's going to destroy. He becomes the Psalms 27, one God that we know. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And it continues on. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. They stumbled and fell because I didn't fear them. I had reverence and fear of God. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. God will remove the scales from your eyes so you see his army and not what you're facing in the world. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer him, offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. He becomes a Psalms 27, one God. Whom shall I fear? Hello, this is Pastor Daniel. I hope the message has touched you. And I hope that, you know what, Holy Spirit's there tugging on your heartstrings. And I'm hoping that you are willing to make a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I know for me, it was a young child that I gave my heart to the Lord, but then, then I didn't live uh, my relationship for the Lord. I lived my relationship through my parents for the Lord. And then there was a time in my life where things just went wrong and went bad and, and the Holy Spirit was tugging at my heart and saying, hey, look, you know what? It's time. And I got on my knees. I cried out to the Lord and I made Jesus my Lord and Savior. And that was my relationship with him. And I know he's calling you right now into a relationship. And I just want to give you an opportunity to just enter in and give Jesus Christ your life and receive him as your Lord and Savior. It's this simple. 
All you have to do is close your eyes and bow your head and say, Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to come into my heart and change my life. And I surrender my will to you in Jesus' name. If you've said that prayer, I'm telling you, you are saved. You are on the way to heaven. And he just wants you to live according to his word. So get into a church, start serving, get into the word of God and make a difference in your life. And I'm Hopefully you received a word from the Lord today. If you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, be sure to email us at admin at peak worship so that we can stay in contact with you. We want to make sure that you get plugged into a church in your area and we'll see you next time.